It was an upscale Manhattan address until September 11th. Now Battery Park City is more like a war zone. Some tenants want out, others are threatening court battles over pre-disaster rents. The I-Team's Joe Collum brings us this exclusive report on life at Ground Zero. While the rest of New York slowly returns to normal, there is no escape for residents of Battery Park City. They are surrounded by the remnants of September 11th. The still smoldering ruins, cranes plucking twisted steel from the pile, barges being loaded with millions of pounds of debris, police and National Guardsmen standing sentinel on every corner. One of the city's most exclusive enclaves has become combination demolition site and armed encampment. We've lost all of our services. We uh, don't have um, the basic things. We don't have grocery stores. We don't have drug stores. We don't, we've got to walk a long way for transportation. Rental rates in Battery Park City are astronomical. A one-bedroom apartment could cost three to $4,000 a month. Two bedrooms are going for up to 7000 But with the quality of life here declining so dramatically, residents are now demanding major rent reductions or they're moving out altogether. Teresa Locklear lived in Tribeca Bridge Tower until now. I'm just about to move out this weekend, yeah. Why? Uh, I have a, a, a son and he goes to school in the East Village already. So we moved over there to be closer to the school because the commute at now with all that's going on is too difficult. About half of Battery Park City's 9,000 residents have returned since September 11th. Some tenants are threatening rent strikes if landlords don't grant rent reductions of up to 45 percent, envisioning years of cleanup and reconstruction. But Timothy Carey claims this area will be back to normal within a year. When that 16-acre site becomes a construction site instead of a recovery site, it'll be like any other hole in New York City that's being developed. And it'll, it won't have the, the overpowering uh, image that it now has. Nevertheless, moving vans are everywhere here. Residents say 41 River Terrace is losing about 30 tenants. The landlord is offering 20% rent reductions, but it's not enough for investment banker Alberto Salamanca, who is giving up his $5,000 a month apartment and moving to New Jersey. One reason, the intense noise from cranes that run nonstop outside his windows. We can't even sleep at night. We have a job to perform in day, and basically if we are not well rested and prepared, that job is not going to be there any longer. And as a result, we decided to leave. Realtors say most Battery Park City exiles are not leaving New York. The majority of the people that I've spoken with and I'm dealing with are staying in town. They just want to be a little bit farther away from the commotion of all of this right now. But as many leave, others look to move in. House hunter Ann Ashby says she is undaunted by the turmoil. I mean, there'll be a lot of rebuilding and people have had a tremendous amount of courage here and so... Noise, a lot of noise. noise, a lot of noise. So, no, I'm not discouraged by it. Joe Collum, UPN 9i team. A call today for the federal government to take charge of airport security. Right now, security is managed by individual airports and airlines. Some politicians and airport employees say that's not good enough. They want 28,000 federal employees hired to screen baggage at airports. Congressman Jerry Nadler says the extra manpower is needed. Airport screeners. If this country were invaded, no one would hesitate to increase the size of the army by a million. We have been invaded in a different way. Nadler says making baggage handlers federal employees would make them subjected to FBI background checks and create competitive salaries.